And now we have oh, a nice rat's nest in here. Hopefully there's no rat. Oh my god. That thing talks, dude. That is low. That looks too good. All right, what's going on everybody? Rat Trenches is back for another video. Today we have our project Mark 5 GTI. Now we're gonna be installing some coilovers. If you guys checked out our previous video, you saw that we revealed it. We we're excited to have this for our new project car. And you noticed that the rear is low and the front is way too high. So we're gonna change that and install some coilovers. All right, so before we get started, I wanna shout out Dave over at ECS. He hooked us up and he sent us over some ECS tuning street coilover system. I will link these down below. So if you guys are installing coilovers or you're in the market for coilovers, for your Mark V, these are, you know, quality go-to brands. So um, without further ado, let's just start unboxing and see what we got in here. Nicely packaged. Oh, that red, I love their color red, the ECS tuning red. It's gonna go well with this red. Yep. Yeah, for real. We got the collar here. We got the shock, spring. Oh, we got new sway bar links. Clutch. Got some spanner wrenches. Uh, the other sway bar link. Shock, collar, spring. Those are all gonna be the rear, and here's the front. Open that bad boy up real quick. Sheesh. That's a nice That's unit quality right there. Right there. Yep. Spins very nice. Love the color. Yeah, it's heavy, it's got a good quality. It really feels good. If you guys followed the channel for a long time, you know that we had a Mark V back in the day. I put cheap, cheap, cheap coilovers on it and it was the worst mistake of my life. Granted, I was on a high school budget, so times were different. Um, but these are very budget friendly and their quality is fantastic. So compared to the previous ones I have, this is going to be night and day difference. We'll do the passenger side on camera, driver side off camera, because it's pretty much the same procedure. And then we'll do one in the rear. And we're super excited to really install this, get this car dropped. And uh, let's just get right into it. Let's do it. All right, so pretty much what we got to do is we're going to have to take off a couple components just to kind of free up this whole little area. Um, if you guys want a step-by-step -step tutorial, I'll link down a PDF file that ECS provides. So it'll give you like sizes and stuff like that. We're not really going to go into much depth of that. We're just kind of going to show you what to do. Um, first things first, we're going to have to remove this tie rod end, get that out of here. We'll have to disconnect the sway bar link because we do have a new one provided. So we're going to get that out of the way. Then we'll have to disconnect these three bolts that hold the control arm to the uh, bottom of this, the ball joint. And then lastly, there's a strut tower bolt. It's like a pass-through bolt. It's a, a triple square and that is a 14 triple square with a, I think an 18 on the back side so we'll have to get that out of the way. We are going to remove the CV axle from the housing because we have to replace the CV axle. Unfortunately this one's damaged so to make life easier while we're doing the coilovers we're going to end up doing that. So you won't need to remove the CV axle if you're just doing the coilovers but we're going to do it. So we'll kind of show you that but uh, yeah we're going to start off get this uh, tie rod end out of the way. I believe that's going to be a 19. We'll check. Sir. So we went ahead and put our new CV axle and we did it off camera because it's not really related to this install. But now what we're going to do, we got all the bolts out, the pasture bolt as you saw, all the three bolts down low, the tie rod, the sway bar. We got our special tool here, it just kind of spreads the, the spindle, like the strut spreader tool is what it's called. And it's going to go pretty much in the back here, 
spread it wide and that will release the uh, pressure that's holding that strut tower in place so spreading it allowing that to go up and down um, and that will make this a lot easier to remove as you can see otherwise if you didn't have that strut spreader tool you're not getting that shock out unless you improvise and figure out some way to spread that collar it's a little easier to see what the spreader does but it just opens this little gap in there which releases this pretty much so we got that completely free and uh, now we're going to take the three bolts up top out set this on this bucket and we'll get that shock out so we're just going to get this little foam piece out get this little trim out and now we have oh, a nice rat's nest in here we'll get rid of that in a second um, if you haven't had any changes in suspension these three bolts should be a 13 millimeter but since we have aftermarket shocks these are 12 so we're just going to remove those three drop that thing out and get it out of the way hopefully there's no rat shit's hockey mushrooms <laughs> you weren't kidding dude that's a little nest just like that boom she's out all right so we got the old one out unless you got new top mounts and the bearings you won't have to disassemble it but we're going to be reusing this one um, you will need a spring compressor we don't have that we do it the ratchet way around here um, just don't suggest doing this i'm not liable for this it hits you in the face but uh yeah we're gonna put it down take her off And just like that, she's off. she's off. So we will be reusing this whole assembly here. We got the bearing here and the top mount, and then we will be reusing this guy as well. Set this aside, start assembling the new one, and put it back in the car reverse procedure, and we'll get to the backs. All right, so we got our new one here. Um, they are size specific, so just make sure you have this lined up on the appropriate side. We're gonna remove the lock collar, collar B as they call it all the way down then we're going to move this all the way down it'll just help make the uh, top mount go on a little easier less resistance all right so we're going to disregard that piece and then this will just kind of sit in there like that and then see how it's got spring tension will make it a little bit harder to get the bolt on so if you want you could just bring this all the way down It'll make life a lot easier is what we were doing. And you will want to put some anti-seize on the threads and have this spin through it. That way, when you go to adjust it, it's a little bit easier. Before we tighten everything on, we got to put this little bushing in there. And then throw everything together. All right, so we just tightened it down. We used a 22 to get that going. They do make a pass-through socket where you could um, put the socket on and then have the Allen key in there as well. I use the power of the impact. So there is torque specs. Everything is gonna to be torqued. We'll probably do that off camera because I don't wanna bore you. But in that PDF, that ECS linked down below, it'll just show you all the torque specs. So follow that word for word and you'll be good to go. So we're gonna get this in the car. We are gonna leave it in the middle right now and we'll adjust it once it gets in the car. And once we um, lower the car, we'll see where our ride height is. All right, so we just finished up with the passenger side. Um, it was fairly easy. I thought it was gonna be a little more difficult compared to the Audi S3 I have and the other Mark 7 GTIs. The MQV platform's a little different, but these were not too bad. So we're gonna pretty much do the same procedure on the other side, we'll do that off camera. We'll torque everything down over here, put the wheel on. We got a base height set. Um, once we put the wheel on and the coilover settle on the ground, we'll see the clearance 
And if we want to go lower or higher, we'll adjust accordingly by just spanner wrenching either up or down, depending on which way we want to go. Um, so we're going to put the wheel on and do the other side and put it on the ground. So let's do that. All right, so as you can see, it dropped it down a good amount. This was our, just our base setting right now. Doesn't look bad. I think it looks pretty good. So it'll be functional, no clearance issues. Um, but I think Wes and I both kind of agreed off camera that we are gonna wanna go lower. But we don't have a front lip or side skirts at this point in time, so we could definitely go lower. I don't like these tires personally. I think we need to get a little more aggressive, lower profile tire. And then we'll also kind of look a lot better, uh, maybe with some new wheels, but um, yeah, I think we're going to go probably a couple notches lower, see what that looks like, and continue to go from there on both sides. But overall, it's it's really not that bad, I'd say, right? It's yeah, no, it, it definitely would have performed pretty well, but I think it, for our preference, a little lower would be good. I think you had uh, lowering springs in the rear. As you can see, that's pretty low. And this is a little bit higher than that, so I definitely want to bring this down a little bit, and once we put the ECS, in the rear, we'll kind of level it out, but yep. that's kind of like the height we should go, right back there. Yeah. Maybe a little lower. So we'll jack up this side, just spanner wrench it, and, and uh, get at it. All right, so we actually brought it down about 10 more full rotations, and that looks a lot better. It looks good. It's going to ride good. We shouldn't have any rubbing issues. I didn't want to interfere with, you know, hitting the fenders like the previous owner unfortunately did here. It was rubbing, fold that out, chip the paint. Nice little bacon fenders, but uh, yep, uh, that'll look good. So we're gonna do the rear. The rear will probably keep pretty. I can't really see too much, but that's honestly pretty good for the. Yeah, for the lowering springs that he has to set up there. Yeah, it's pretty good. So hopefully, it'll kind of stay that same height and just be level across the board. Look good, ride good, low and slow, baby. <laughs> for, now. for now, slow, yeah. So uh, we'll get the uh, rear up in the air and uh, start cracking. So we made our way to the rear of the car. This is going to be a lot easier than the front of the car. There's less things to take off and it should be maybe 25 to 30 minutes per side. Um, so what you're going to need to do is on this side, there's no headlight level sensor. On the other side there is, so you just have to remove that from the lower control arm. On this side there's not. So we're going to disconnect the lower control arm. It's an 18 on this side, and then an 18 nut on that side. And we'll take that off. Just be careful, it's gonna spring load it, so it's gonna go off a little bit, like that. And we'll put that together, we're gonna have to reuse that. ECS does make a kit for all new hardware. Technically, these are torqued to yield and you should be reusing or using new components. So we're gonna take this spring out of the way here. We are gonna be reusing this top hat right here. He had some Coney lowering springs and uh, shocks. Up here, there's two 16 millimeter bolts that are about right here, upside. And we're gonna to have to remove those and that's what's holding this shock up top. And then there's a bolt down low that holds it into the uh, spindle which we'll take off as well. These are 16s up top. I'm gonna break them loose. All right, got them loose. Now I'm gonna take my gun. So now it's loose from the top. We'll just have to get this bolt down here, which I believe is a 21. And this is that bolt I was talking about right there. It's 21 millimeter and it goes into this housing right here. So we're gonna move that. Way. and then this whole shot comes out so the only thing we're going to be reusing is this and this um, mount right there so we're going to take that off it's a 16 millimeter since we're not going to be reusing this shock and I'm not selling it to anyone I am going to put a vice grip on here just to make life easier 
Yeah, these are bad shocks. They don't even fucking retract. Um, we put a vice grip on there just to hold it in place so when I put the 16 millimeter on top, it doesn't go nowhere. Go. Boom. So, we got this guy, and then this bump stop is literally dry rot it really badly so we might end up replacing that down the line but for time's sake and right now we're gonna reuse that um yeah get this out of the way we got a new nut that comes with the kit and we'll start putting this one together all right so we just got this all back together and that's pretty much it. We're gonna have to go in here since ECS has a different style than most brands. Um, this actually goes on the bottom rather than the top. So um, I'll show you guys how to do that. But if you make your way in here, Wes. Since we're going through the bottom, we're gonna have to remove this little bushing in there. So you can just take a pry bar and kind of just pry it out of the way. That thing was almost welded on there but we got that out of the way so we'll take this little perch right here and disassemble it real quick so i got this which is going to go through the bottom and stick up in there and then this let's thread it so it's going to go over top and just thread it and then we'll go under and tighten it All right, so since we're gonna slam the rear, we got our um, collars all the way bottomed out down there. So we'll be able to put the uh, spring and reuse that top hat. We'll be able to just go right under there and sit like that. But actually, before we do that, I'm gonna take it out just to make life easier. I am gonna put the uh, shock itself on first, that way. Get it out of the way. And that's just the reverse procedure. Those two 16s up top, and then that one that goes into the uh, bottom down there. So we got the top set in place. Now we're gonna put the spring on, but I do have a little anti-seize. Just gonna throw that on the uh, threads down low. So just in case we ever wanna raise it or whatever the case is, should be somewhat easier. Here in Jersey, these things tend to rust pretty easily. All right, so now that we got the top mounted up, we're gonna go ahead and put that 21 millimeter bolt through the uh, shock into the housing. And um, you might have to fool with it a little bit because you wanna make sure you get this straight on. You don't wanna strip it. And go by hand, make life easy. Don't strip it. So I got that in. Let me get my handy dandy socket, plug and walk. And we're going to just pretty much drill that hole. It's a long bolt. There we go. We've got some resistance now. Tighten it down and we'll torque it after. Now it's time to put the last piece of the puzzle, the spring itself. So we got the flat side here, which goes bottom first. And we're just going to slide that up into the hole. And then the last thing we got to do is just put the bolt that goes through the control arm and um, out the other side and it just locks that in place. Might have to push it up with a little bit of effort, especially if you're not going on the lowest setting because then you have the spring to fight against. So you'll have to uh, probably put a jack under there and jack it up. But if you're going lowest setting possible, it's a little bit easier to line up. So like, like that. And then we'll get that bolt nut, thread her home. Oh my god. Damn, man. That low. thing talks, man. That is low. Even we with might, the monster truck tires. I think we're gonna have to lower the front to that looks too good. Yeah, that well, let me get the light side. Might be a little too low. Just a tad bit. Oh yeah. Is it touching the fender? No. It's that's, close though. It's about a finger. It, yeah. Alright guys, so we did the other side off camera and this thing is freaking low, man. <laughs> it's extremely low. 
Either we're gonna raise it up in the rear a little bit to level it out, or we're gonna lower the front and keep this low and match this with height because quite honestly, this looks sick. It some looks nicer really wheels. Really sick. Um, some different tires, I think it'll be a perfect fit. But uh, yeah. now, all said and done, this wasn't really that bad of a job. If you guys have any questions or comments or concerns or anything like that, just let us know down below. Um, but I think that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this video. Unfortunately, it got really dark quick. So that's gonna wrap up today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you wanna see more of this bad boy, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.